up guys? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. My name is Annie. I welcome you to come into these tarot readings with an open heart, an open mind, and a desire to better yourself. This is optional advice or guidance meant to motivate you, empower you, inspire you, uh, and offer you confirmations on things that you are already thinking and feeling and sensing. If you don't resonate with the material that comes through, please push those messages aside. They may resonate for you at a later date, and they may not. Have faith it's going out to someone who needs to hear it, even if it is not you. Use your logic, your discretion, your discernment. Separate what is meant for you and what is not. Uh, I come at this with love and positivity, so please take that away here today. You are responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Let's try and have some fun uh, to get you some insightful messages. Check out that box below for the decks I use, how to contact me for a personal, as well as my social media links. Welcome to the tea party. Let's read your tarot cards. What's up, fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius? Your timestamps will be right down below if you want to hop right to yours. We are going to start with my Aries gang. Aries in love. All right, Aries. Let's talk about your person. Your person in love. <clears throat> All right. All right. Queen of Pentacles, Emperor, and the Devil. So I, I feel like you're uh, in the middle, Aries. If this is your card, male or female, you have a Queen of Pentacles on one side, which I'll be honest, can sometimes be the wife or the mother. Um, so I, again, tr translate into what makes sense for you, whether you're male or female. Uh, and then on the other side, you have uh, sort of what I would view as maybe temptation. You may have a friend who's sort of been giving you flirtatious vibes, and it could be that you know that that friend is already married, uh, particularly a Capricorn, but it doesn't have to be um so yeah i actually see you as right in the middle of two of two people or i'm even going to say two situations so it doesn't even have to be infidelity per se especially if you're recently divorced or out of a long-term commitment it could be that you're slowly releasing the the partner uh and moving into something new but then i don't i don't know why it would be in related as temptation because you know why not but i'm sure you have your reasons so let's get something on the other side. What is what is coming through on the other side of this energy? All right, two of cups. So that's that's beautiful. I love seeing that. And these four cards came out all together. Five cards. All right. Page of Wands, the Tower. All right. So let's see here. So a lot of my Aries may have some sort of awakening in terms of either finally realizing that they have feelings for someone or vice versa, that someone feeling someone's feelings are finally exposed to you. Um, I like that Two of Cups and Ace of Cups is coming out. I think it does say make sure you're protecting your heart, right? Do what's um, best uh, in, in your own best interest, so to say. But yeah, I, I think part of this, it's almost like it's a very interesting energy. So this might be reverse, but I'm almost getting there's this need to just kind of take a leap of faith to just take a chance, which I'll be honest, uh, via stereotype, Aries are typically risk takers, right? It doesn't have to mean all the time, but you know, maybe you don't resonate with that. Someone here, it's almost like, I don't hate this tower. I don't. I think there's fear of maybe getting into some sort of commitment and universe is saying like, it's like throw your hands up in the air and just enjoy it for what it is. Uh, you may be not wanting to engage with someone because you sense that they're really into you and you're not sure. I think universe is just kind of like, it's life. Like, we don't know. There are no guarantees. So there's definitely a sense in the spread of just like, let the chips fall where they may. That's sort of what I get from this because there is love here. There is a very good connection. Page of Wands is a lot of like warmth and flirtation. Uh, someone who's very fun, someone who has a sense of adventure, um, someone who's just passionate about life, but also passionate about you. Now, for some of you, what's hindering this to take off is that somebody in the scenario is already with someone, either committed or married. For others of you, if that's not your story, if you're completely single, you're not engaging with anybody who's committed to anyone else, it's saying that some of you may be starting to date around and you're sort of getting these little, um, uh, what is it, like not impulses, but triggers of the idea of things going in too quickly it could be that you've made that mistake in the past and it didn't work out so you're very um sensitive and cautious when it comes to expressing how you feel about someone or again like just kind of throwing the chips in the air and seeing what happens i see you exercising a lot more caution this time around only and that's good I, i'm not at all faulting you for that i think it's great to think about the long term and not just be impulsive about everything ironically though this seems like a situation where it might serve you a little bit right to be a little bit impulsive in terms of don't overthink the details do you like them yes do they like you yes so what's stopping you so again unless what's stopping you is marriage and commitment which i mean you know you got to trust your intuition on that one i i wouldn't advise for that but you know everybody's situation is complicated i'm not here to judge but if you're not married and you're not committed and neither is your person 
this is going places. Eight of Wands. Look how beautiful this card is. This is actually one of my favorite Eight of Wands. It just like, it looks amazing. Typically, Eight of Wands is shown like straight in a row. It, either way, it's a lot about like messages, communications, travel, uh, energy, exertions, getting things up and off the ground. This is like you guys meet in the middle or something about that. There's there's like sparks to the flame. I frequently see this card too as lighting candles one off of another. Do you know how like, I don't know if anybody's still going to church these days, depending on, you know, the whole uh, corona situation. But, uh, you you know, like when somebody holds a candle or even at like some sort of um, like candle vigil where you light one torch off of another. I see that as somebody who, who, and this could go vice versa, Aries, but there's something about your connection where you warm each other or you spark joy in one another. Also, the idea of it being kind of like, um, when I said candle vigil, almost like an experience where someone may be mourning a loss in their life or something about a sense of loss or heartbreak. This person comes to your rescue, like they'll still light your candle. They'll they'll light your fire. So yes, you can take it in a more like sexual metaphor, but I, I'm almost seeing as there's like a very spiritual union of these people. And again, it doesn't have to be marriage. I am sensing that somebody, whether it's you or someone coming in, maybe this is new. It doesn't, you don't have to know who this person is yet. I do sense that one or one or both of you may be coming out of something long term where you put your best foot forward, you put in your effort, and for one reason or another, it didn't work out. You know, acknowledge the lessons that you can take away from that, but don't let that stop you from uh, engaging in something new and fresh and exciting. It's it's almost like don't bring past baggage or past disappointment and project it into your future relationships because. Quite frankly, this seems like this could take off with flying colors. I will say it seems new-ish, or, or again, I think I mentioned it could be a friend who maybe you're worried to engage in them uh, beyond friendship because you don't want to, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, like uh, spoil the waters or taint, taint the water. Like you have such a good friendship that you're like, I don't know if I want to be romantic. It could be that someone's holding back on that, but I do see for a lot of you that sort of transforming into the future. Uh, in terms of major arcana, I do have Aries, so you could certainly be dealing with another one. You do have Capricorn. You technically have two cards of Capricorn. It could be a female earth sign is involved here, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. I have Libra, and then this is Mars energy, so this could be you. It could also indicate possibly something with a Scorpio. If that's the case, it's a Scorpio who I think got out of a long-term commitment, and maybe they're still in the process of healing. Um, but look, <laughs> they're coming in. They're coming in hot. Uh, I actually I actually don't think that was an appropriate use of that. I don't think they're coming in hot. I think they're coming in curious. I think they're coming in joyful. But you you have really beautiful cards. Look how cool that, that Two of Cups is. This is a great deck. I really don't use it enough. Um, anyway. Aries, that looks good. Congratulations. You got something good in the works. All right, let's do our fellow fire sign. What deck do I want to use? I kind of want to keep using this deck, but whatever. All right, Leo. What's up, Leo? How are you guys? Let's talk about your love life. Let's talk about that person in your life, Leo. That was a great, great one Aries just got. I'm into that. Let's see. Let's make sure the deck isn't upside down. Ooh, I just saw Ten of Cups. All right, Leo, Leo. Tell me about Leo's person. Let's flip the deck. All right, Leo, your person. All right, they are closing out a cycle in their life, and they're moving optimistically to the future with a lot of lessons. I heard humbly. So it could be that they, uh, I'm hearing like they got spanked, like they they had their ass handed to them in, in some sense, um, because they went through some sort of issue where it ended up being more effort then uh, payoff. Does that make sense? They put in a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort into something. And for one reason or another, it just didn't work out, especially with someone in your life, Leo, who is a single parent now. It could be that they previously were married or it doesn't even have to be that. Somebody who very likely already has a child, but it doesn't have to be. Um, yeah, they're turning the wheel in a positive direction. Love that Wheel of Fortune is coming out. Um, they may have just left a job on their own accord or possibly got laid off, but it doesn't have to be that. The thing is, though, whatever that ending was, that it was like, oh, that was rough. They're headed into fortune. Like Wheel of Fortune is very good. So again, it's, it's a cycle change in their life. Two cards indicating ending of an old cycle, beginning of a new one, and they're moving forward with truth, with honesty, with justice. This person, uh, if this is someone you have already engaged with romantically, you may have caught them in a little bit of a fib or a little bit of a lie. I think mentally they're on the verge of transformation in terms of moving forward with truth, with justice. You might be dealing with a Libra, certainly doesn't have to be. Uh, so let's get some cards for, for my Leos here. Leo. So, okay, so, so it looks like some of you may have been engaging, uh, particularly with a male earth sign, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn, doesn't have to be, but that is showing up here, who either was committed or married. The thing is, I see you turning over a new leaf of realizing that 
<clears throat> something about that wasn't good for your mental and spiritual health. So I think slowly but surely you're sort of disengaging from a relationship where you were the third party Leo. Obviously, that's not everybody's story, right? Um, some of you, there's marriage with an earth sign who I, I want to be clear, this is not someone who is currently with a third party. Um, it could be that it's, uh, um, sorry. It's being relayed to me that with an ending of a job comes marriage. It's almost like the universe is compensating for a loss in either your life or your person's life. This is probably someone you've been with for a while. Again, it could be a, a female air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Could also be a Taurus or possibly a um, Capricorn, another, another card of Taurus. Tell me a little bit more, though. So, <clears throat> again, I see you uh, removing yourself from being in any sort of extracurricular activities, whether you're the one who was married or not, or if it was your person. I see you disconnecting from that, which I think that's badass, Leo. I think that's very much needed in this situation, <clears throat> and it's going to force you to grow. There's going to be a huge uh, a spike of maturity in the way that you view relationships as well, because the thing is you, you both are being newly empowered with knowledge, uh, with making executive decisions in your life that promote your self-growth and your happiness. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of you, uh, if you're already living with someone and there's a lot of like household troubles, you may be moving to a new place and starting a home there, starting a family there where it's like, yeah, I'm sort of getting like, I, I'm not, I don't mean to make it like an ageist thing, but sort of like, you, you know, the young couple who moves to New York, only you're paying huge amounts for your apartment, for your rent. You may end up settling in like the, the countryside or whatever it is. And it's like there you actually feel like you can breathe again and let your hair down. And so you may start building a family, a lifestyle, a committed relationship together. Though if you're already living with them, I have a feeling you are kind of committed, right? But I, I see you ending something that is burdensome with your person. Uh, and there is great cards of commitment here. Um, again, though, if you were the third party, it's a, it's a um, disconnect from the commitment, if that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, the player is gone, or you're leaving them goodbye. Um... The thing is, you're gonna. This is saying you're gonna have to be strong in your footing or um, uh, s stand firmly in the commitments you've made to your own spiritual path. Because I do see that if you were dealing with someone who was married or a player, right? <clears throat> I do see them circling back around to try and get you to engage with them again. But the thing is, the universe is saying you have someone so much better here. Why are you wasting your time with the player? Um, Knight of Wands, you know, they're fun. They're a good time. They're very sexy. They're very beautiful. They're lots of energy. King of Pentacles will bring home the bacon, though. So he might be a little bit more serious, but you know what? Like, his bank account shows for it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that's what you need to base your relationships on. Ultimately, Earth is about... Um, uh, longevity, stability, right? The guy who actually owns a home versus the guy who's like couch surfing. Do you know what I mean? There's like a maturity level in the Knight of Wands versus the King of Pentacles. Um, I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, I see you engaging with someone who's already a single parent or has multiple children. It could be from multiple marriages. And now it's like you're the next one on their stop. Only you realize like this person hasn't, they're not even looking for anything long term. They're just looking for fun. And, you know, Leo, you're a great time. I'm sure you're looking for fun as well. But I'm sort of getting the impression you know that this person isn't very good for you. Um... Yeah, you, you're building your mind, body, and spirit. Some of you may be uh, competing in some sort of athletic thing. I don't know if it's like a, a jog to cure or whatever, or I, it could even be one of those like Tough mutters or something very athletic where it's like you really have to get, again, mind, body, and spirit all in order. Um, that in itself, it's like giving yourself some sort of gift because you're putting your energy and your happiness and investing it in yourself versus other people. Because this could be you too. You know, the king of investments, right? Investing in yourself is going to yield very positively for your love life. So anyone who's, who's interested in maybe an earth sign, a musician earth sign, all right jazz saxophone something like that you you could i don't know something to do with jazz music it's, it doesn't have to be any musician maybe you're at a restaurant and there's i don't know something about jazz music take it with a grain of salt yeah. fight for the better one don't settle <clears throat> it, it's hard to be single for long periods of time and not want to hop on the dating apps and do you know what i mean but it's saying if you exercise patience and practicality and self-respect you're going to end up with something incredible yeah uh, a lot of libra energy you have three cards of libra here right now um 
And some of you are dealing with a court case. Tell me about that. What's the deal? If you're, or you're waiting on a payout or some sort of executive decision involving, a, it could be a government job or, again, j uh, justice. Something to do with justice. What's that about? Court case. It could be a settlement from a divorce or something of the sort, right? Again, this is not everybody's message, but what's the deal with that? A government payout or government checks? The, okay, so for a lot of you, it has to do with a divorce settlement. You're going to get the house. That's what I just heard. <laughs> All right, cool. Something about land or property, or you're going to get a big chunk of money that would allow you to purchase a new home or a new land or some, something of the sort. This may have had to do something to do with the player energy. It doesn't have to, but... Interesting. Okay, so you may have people who are, and this is kind of a rough message, but why not tell you just so you can have your defenses up a little bit, which is exactly what this card is about. You may show your love and affection, Leo, by purchasing nice things for people in your life, whether it's your boyfriend or your husband or your kids. That is beautiful that you're very generous and want them to know that you love them. But careful because when you start doing that too much with material goods, you attract a lot of insects who are looking to feed off of you because they know that, oh, well, you know, she'll help me pay my rent. She'll help me cover this or that. Or And the thing is, a lot of you, I think for the longest time, you were not wanting to believe that about your person again your player type energy you may have lent somebody a bunch of money i think you've come to the realization like oh they're using me and, and i have to be honest for a lot of you that's exactly what was happening only the thing is there's an there's an epiphany about it so i think you stop and i think it's it's a difficult decision because i do sense that you do still love this person you know um but yeah it's like they're feeding off of you and i am sort of getting people are using you for your money or, or something about for your connection. It could be networking because you hold a very prestigious uh, position at a job or in some sort of club or something. And it's like people are kind of like wanting to, to, what is that expression, rub elbows with you or something because they know that you're, you're like the gatekeeper into something bigger. So whether that's your bank account or your wallet or, again, your network of people, I, I sort of sense that somebody, it was like they were like shoo them away like a fly. Like you don't need them in their life. They're, they're feeding off of you, but they're not giving you anything. They're like... You know, mosquito. They're they're blood suckers. That's what I get. All right, Leo. Let's do uh, let's do one more about uh, new love or. I do see an Ace of Wands, uh, possibly again with a Libra or a King of Pentacles, a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. There's possibly marriage with a male Earth sign, a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Some of you have fire sign children, and they they they're needing money to go to music school or to study music again. Something about jazz or or I don't know, playing an instrument. You may be buying them an instrument for, uh, uh, I almost said for Thanksgiving, for Christmas or whatever you celebrate during the holidays. You may be making an expensive purchase on either a car or a musical instrument. What what the hell does that have to do with anything? I don't know. Uh, encourage your child to be creative and child encourage your child to pursue things in the arts because it will make them very happy. It might not be the most practical money-wise. I know some of you are like, oh, starving artist, but... Yeah, you're, you're going to be glad you encourage them because they could actually end up making a lot of money for the family is sort of what I'm getting there. And that could be you, right? Um, all right, new love. One more one more spread for Leo. Ooh, that one's, that one's peeking out. All right. Yeah, hold on to your money. Um, don't don't be dishing out money to people who, who just don't deserve it. Yeah, some of you are buying a new house or something very lovely and beautiful for yourself. Um yeah, it's almost like rewarding yourself for honoring your integrity, for choosing people who, I'm sorry, choosing yourself above people who really don't offer you much in return. It's not tit for tat. I'm not suggesting you, you view love through a monetary standpoint, but ultimately I see you being in a position where you've been dishing out a lot of money or it could even be energy, generosity towards people where it's just, it's a dead end. So I think you're done with that. And it's almost like the universe is going to choose to celebrate you once you cut it off with your player. Some of you may have an Aries or another Leo coming in or a Cancer. That looks like there would be beautiful love and romance. And again, possibly building a house or moving into a, a common space with one of those signs. Aries, what did I say? Aries, Leo, Cancer. That, that has beautiful things all over it. Wedding bells, I'm seeing for some of you. Um, and then let's see. This, this is Jane Austen Tarot. This says, you pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. 
that has to do with your player. It literally came out right under them. So I'm just going to show you that, Leo, and you can do with that what you will. Um, I don't think it's worth giving your time and your energy for people who keep you who keep you waiting. Sorry, my, my computer froze here. Come on, come back. All right, there we go. Yeah, I know it's hard. I think if you choose to sever and disconnect from this, you by default are letting the universe know I'm ready for the good stuff now. So yeah, don't don't be afraid to uh, release yourself from kind of player energy if it really isn't serving you. Um, that's that's what I got for you, Leo. Uh, and again, some of you do have marriage and at least long-term commitment in terms of buying, buying some sort of house or moving in together. That was in a lot of your cards too. So of course my Leos are going to be in different positions in their life. But um, yeah, get it, Leo. I kind of want to keep using this deck. Let's see. Yeah, let's do this one. All right. Sagittarius. What's up, guys? Happy birthday. Let's talk about your love life. Quick shuffle. Sagittarius. Tell me about Sagittarius' person. All right. Sagittarius, your person. Ten of swords. They are finally letting the anarchy inside of their mind, they're letting it go. They're releasing thoughts that have either been negative or pessimistic or... Um, Something about like hindering their freedom and their ability to enjoy life. There, there's something about it where there's been a big turning point where they're just like, I'm at ease. I'm sort of hearing like they're comfortable in their own skin. And they struggled with that for a long time. Identity issues. There, there was almost like a crisis of, <clears throat> it could have been a crisis of faith, but almost a crisis of identity. They, they, lost, they lost track of who they were. They, they lost themselves is sort of what I get. They are not just running. They are sprinting from that because they've had an epiphany or um, I'm almost getting like a spiritual awakening. They went through something very scary or very um, oppressive in their life. They could have been with an abusive partner or something of the sort. And for a long time, it felt like a mental prison. And I'm not exactly sure what the turning point was or what the cause, uh, the cause and effect or whatever it was of them all of a sudden having this like a light bulb moment of I need to get the hell out of here. Like this isn't my story anymore. It comes from a very beautiful place of realizing that they took back the power of their thoughts or someone who was feeding their thoughts negatively, keeping them in a place of, of this, right? It, it just, it's not good. It, it's all about thoughts, though. It's not necessarily indicating someone who was, you know, physically abusing them. But, I mean, it could have been, God forbid, right? Ultimately, though, I think we, we often neglect to say about the Ten of Swords, look how beautiful this version is, though. It's sun, illumination, epiphany, warmth, creativity, fun, regrowth, sun in Gemini, right? So again, Gemini, this is another card of Gemini. You could be dealing with one. Um, Gemini has to do with uh, scattered thoughts. Like, uh, Geminis are very chatty, right? They love to talk about things. They like to engage with multiple people in conversations and this and that. And not necessarily in an infidelity way, but sometimes those, those thoughts, they run rampant and then they start, like, again, serving as, like, this oppressive energy. Whatever it is, the sun is saying this is the dawning of a new day, the sunrise, right? Someone stood up and did something that they were afraid to do or thought they could never do, and making that subtle change, I'm not even going to say in action, making that subtle change of thought or perspective, it's like they're off to the races again. This person was very stuck for what, what feels like a, a, a decent amount of time. It could have just been 2020, right? It could be something like that. It could have been years. They were stuck in a very negative headspace, or again, they were with someone who energetically was really bringing them down. And I don't know what it was, but there was something about this taste of freedom. All of a sudden, they are off. This is a brand new chapter in their life. And yeah, I, you have three cards of Gemini, so it's very possible you're dealing with one. But here's the thing I'm almost getting from your person. They're trying to catch up now. It could have been that you were flirting with this person or you were interested in this person. And, you know, once upon a time... You were hoping that they were going to change their mind. And I don't think it had anything to do with you, Sagittarius. I think this person was fighting a lot of personal demons. They were going through like a dark night of the soul. All of a sudden, though, I almost think they have this like, oh, my God, I, I got to see if Sagittarius is still available or something where it's like they're trying to play catch up in all the time they lost going through this. The thing is, though, especially for the cross watchers, if this is you or, or Sagittarius, right, this could be you as well. This whole time that you feel like you wasted in a relationship that was again oppressive or abusive or you were just living in a state of depression or something where you weren't seeking treatment for it i see that completely changing like literally 180 somebody is is taking this chapter of their life and ripping out the chapters and moving on i almost hesitate to say ripping out the chapters though because i know it doesn't make sense now but this did actually serve this person because it forced them to realize and recognize 
their self-love, that they weren't respecting themselves in a relationship, or even internally, the thoughts that they were telling themselves were cruel, was mean, you know? So it's, it's, there's something very positive where this person moves in a different direction. I, I'm going to pull cards for it, but I'm sensing a lot of them, Sagittarius. They feel like they missed out on an opportunity with you. The thing is, they weren't in a place to accept the offer from you when it first came in, you know, months ago, weeks ago, years ago. I'll be honest, it feels like years ago for some of you. I see them trying to play catch up in terms of taking back experiences or reaching out to experiences that... Again, we're offered once upon a time, but it's like they're trying to make good on the past. They didn't miss out on anything, though. That's the major thing, is that this was destined. This timeline had to happen and develop organically, because had this person accepted your love offer or vice versa, Sagittarius, it would have fallen to bits. It would have literally fallen apart, because this person either didn't love themselves, or they were just going through a chapter in their life where a lot of external forces it felt like they were crushing. It, like, uh, I'm almost getting gasping for breath. They could have lost a parent. They could have lost their job. They could have had anxiety. They could have had uh, suicidal thoughts, you know, something very dark. They had to beat this themselves. And so once they have, there's just like this, I'm ready again. Like, I'm ready to participate in my own life and my love life, you know? Anyway, let's pull cards on you. All right. And again, that could be your story, too. So in fact, this person does have the crossbow, right? The the archer, my Sagittarian. So either they're headed towards you or this is you, Sag. You pick your player. It doesn't matter to me. Let's do another energy. So who's coming in? Tell me about Sagittarius over here or whatever. Tell me what the other energy. I'll say it this way. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Sagittarius you went through your own period of healing uh, where you had to get grounded. Some of you needed to release a Leo in your life because it, it was like um, puzzle pieces that just wouldn't fit. It, it could have been... The thing is, I think you did love this person. I think you had love for them, but for some reason or another, it just wasn't... It wasn't the right time. Okay, so that could indicate that you might be revisiting a Leo. If, if that makes sense in terms of years ago and something just didn't work out, it's possible that someone is coming in to bring healing to that. Um... Because, yeah, one or both of you have always kind of held on to the idea of each other, even though it didn't make sense practically. You could have lived in different cities. You could have both had, you know, a different uh, relationships going on simultaneously. I do sense, Sagittarius, there's something here where you both always kind of thought about each other. So the person on this side, who, again, they've gone through a huge awakening and a period of healing... You know, it's funny. I said the same thing to Leo as well. They may be really focused on their athletics right now or their body, their exercise routine, their their dietary needs or something. It's almost like they're they're trying to make their their body some sort of machine, especially for someone who is dealing with mental health issues. That their whole their whole trajectory of health could have been put on the back burner and so maybe they gained a lot of weight or maybe they weren't eating and they, you know, weren't um they didn't have enough weight on them. Somebody's really paying attention to their body and I am getting what they're consuming which is really good. It's going to do wonderful things for, for their physical health um, as well as their mental health. This person, even, yeah, I said the same thing to Leah. This person may even be running a race or competing in some sort of athletic tournament or it, they could even belong to some sort of club where there's like weekly weigh-ins. I don't know if it's like Weight Watchers or something of the sort. Um, the thing is there's a community vibe to whatever this is that would be very enjoyable and fun and exciting because you're all rooting for each other. You're all cheering each other on. And if, if this whole scenario of the past person doesn't make sense to you, what I just said about joining some sort of community or club where there is an element of either mental or physical health, your body, it could even be AA or some sort of communal group where it has a spiritual sense to it, but that's not the purpose of it. So yes, it could be a church group, but it could be like a, a choral or a choir group, a singing group. It could be a basketball team. It could, it could be something about that. It does really great things for, uh, for you and for your for your friendships, for your network. You, and and I, the thing is, I think this is saying you're going to meet somebody in that circle of people who are like-minded, who have similar interests. Yeah, a lot, a lot of you have a Gemini coming in. You have the Knight of Swords twice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, again, this person had to run away from you in the past because they weren't in a place where they were ready to love you, let alone themselves. Like, that's priority number one, right? Sag is loving yourself. This person has done a lot of, uh, they've done a lot of work on themselves and also something external that was contributing to their depression or whatever was going on. Something about that scenario has been lifted. 
it, I don't know if it has to do with the change in where their Saturn placement has been, right? Saturn is moving into, I think, Aquarius in, when is it, early January, something like that? <laughs> I, I should really know that, but I don't. It, it's, it's like in the next month or so. Maybe that's what contributes. Maybe wherever Saturn in their chart has been, that placement has shifted. So all of a sudden there's like freedom, liberation, and, and importantly, Knight of Swords, a, an ability or a desire to communicate something very important to you, Sagittarius. They're coming in. They may write to you. They might physically write you a handwritten letter. Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be romantic, right? Old school, writing letters in cursive. I don't even know if I know how to write in cursive anymore. <laughs> anyway, they could text you. They could call you. It's, it's communications. It's messages coming through about someone who's done a lot of work on themselves and they're stable again. This could be you, Sagittarius, too. The four, it's, it's, it's stability. It's, you know, we think of the four corners of a house. We can go up from here. We can continue to build. But there was a period where, and the thing is, I think this was a cause and effect where this person rejecting you, whether you meant to or not, it forced you to kind of step up and work on yourself too in ways maybe you didn't even realize you needed to. I see you both doing a lot of work. I will say one person in the scenario was really struggling with something. These are some heavy cards, but again, this is the dawning of a new day. It's like they beat their internal demons. And, and I am even wanting to say an external demon too. Obviously, we're all responsible for how we... Um, uh, how we handle things, you know, what we choose to believe about ourselves and how we advocate for ourselves, um, uh, the way we respond to things, you know, feelings emotionally. Someone was having a very rough period, but again, there's like this freedom. I'm hearing like choirs of angels. Do you know how in movies or TV shows there's this like, ah, uh, moment? Like that's how this person feels. Because they, yeah, they, they were just in a really rough position. So I see them trying to catch up with you. Even even if this is you, yes, that message still stands. But the fact that there's like this, this motorbike, this speed, this action, this, you know, rebel without a cause, devil may care type vibe. I, I mean that in a very positive way of like, you guys are fun. Like, you know, you guys are fun. And I think for a long time, you either forgot that about yourself or this person is looking to catch up and experience avenues of fun and joy that they didn't have for many years or many months. Yeah, you might be dealing with someone who loves to write, someone who loves to write poetry, someone who, who writes in their journal a lot, someone who, who excels in math and science, someone who's very brainy. Um, interesting. You may have written them off as superficial, though. Yeah, there was an ending with this person. Okay, so I have to be honest. Yes, this could be someone new, especially, again, in that team or that that um, group that, that engages in, like, fun activities together, like-minded people. You could meet someone new there, especially a Virgo or a Sagittarius or a Gemini, possibly a Capricorn. Most of you, it's confirming to me, you already had a Ten of Swords moment with this person, and it feels like a lot of you, again, someone has seen the light where it's like, maybe I want to heal this relationship or I want to give it one more try. So I, I will say this. Don't negate all the work that you've already done in your own life, Sagittarius. It's important that you do focus on, on what's best for you mentally, physically, emotionally. You, you guys may end up dating an athlete or someone who's very involved in like sports teams and, sorry, activities. Someone may be a truck driver. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. So what's between them? Yeah, a period of separation was crucial. It, it was, uh, I'm hearing independence. This person had to be on their own in order to step into their power. What follows the hermit? The, te the uh, Wheel of Fortune. The nine to the ten is what I was going to say. I was going to say the ten of pentacles. So you might just marry this person. <laughs> And again, self-worth has been renewed. It's been restored. This person loves themselves again. God bless it. I love when I see readings like this. It's so optimistic. And it, and it like these readings in particular are so important because it does show that even when you're at your lowest of lows, this is evidence that some people have been there and they've still come out on the other side of it. So like, if this is you now, don't give up. Like there's an awakening that comes through where something shifts and changes in your life when you want it to, when you decide that you deserve good things, right? Or your person it's like the dawning of a new day. It's like someone feels like they have a new lease on life. That's how I would encapsulate this. Yeah, Sagittarius, you have a romantic suitor coming in, uh, possibly a king of coins, a, a, um, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. But I almost said Aries Leo Sag. So, you know, you do have a card of Virgo. What is what is Virgo shining his lamp on here? Romance. I, I can already tell. Someone who has a lot of hats, a lot of sports hats, athletic hats, a baseball lover, a baseball player, a, you know, hockey, golf, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. There's an athlete here. 
and someone might be a twin. So this may have to do with your Gemini or something about uh, uh, two sisters. So that could be you. Uh, something about a sister plays a part in this too. Uh, so I don't know if that was the person you had to move in with after the breakup or you have a, uh, a sister, a soul sister, a, you know, someone you, someone who maybe isn't family, but they're like your best friend who you really relied on their support during this matter, especially a Virgo. Um, they helped you get through this. And I, I don't, I don't know what else this is saying other than the sister plays an important role in this. So I don't know if your sister always thought very highly of this person or your sister maybe um, told you to disengage. I, I don't know. There's something about that. And the, the thing is, the hermit is shining the light on it. So you're being asked to examine why this is. Because I'll be honest, Edge, I don't know. I don't know what the message is with the sister, but the Virgo shines his lantern on introspection and what needs to be dealt with mentally, internally. It has something to do with the sister or the twin. Again, it, put, it could just be uh, indicate there's a Gemini, even if you're dealing with a male Gemini. Or it doesn't even have to be a sister. I'm going to say the sibling. The sibling is very important, something regarding your love life. So again, whether they were a hindrance to you uh, seeking love or the opposite, they were your, your rock, your, they were your support system. Maybe it's saying uh, pay your dues, pay some respect, pay some... So interesting, did some of you lose a sibling? Did the... Okay, interesting strength uh, a leo a card of leo possibly um hey look teacups and teapots i love this deck in fact my my best friend who's a gemini gave me this deck and i'm i'm in love with it and it's jane austen tarot sag she was a sagittarius anyway <clears throat> This person's dawning of a new day, whether this is you or your, your your romantic suitor here, someone very likely from your past, they may have lost someone very important to them and suddenly they have this recognition of, I don't want to miss out on my romantic partner. Um, it doesn't have to be death. And the thing is, I don't predict that on my channel anyway. So I'm telling you right now, Sag, I'm not predicting death in your life. Do you understand that? I need you to know that so I don't have people freaking out like, oh my God, my, you know, I don't predict death. I don't do that. My spirit guides don't ask me to relay that to you. However, you may happen to know the T on this person via social media that maybe they lost someone very important in their life. Maybe it was their mother or their sister or some sort of feminine energy. Or again, that could have been you where there's just, there's this awakening of really wanting to take advantage of the people in your life who you love most and to let them know. To communicate that, hey, even though you're married, Sagittarius, I'm like, I'm always going to love you. That kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, it, it's positive. Uh, again, this could involve a Leo, a Gemini, a Virgo, a Sagittarius, a um, couple cards of Virgo here, like eight, eight million cards of Gemini. And then you have the world closing out old chapters and entering into a new one. For a lot of you, there's marriage material here. The world, it's like you offer, uh, offer something circular to each other, right? <laughs> you know, the ring, the promise, the engagement. Uh, and then the here, if it represents, um, weddings, long-term commitments, spiritual commitment. Con it can be conformity in the sense of doing what is traditional in long-term relationships. So, you know, it doesn't have to be marriage, but I have to be honest, I have several cards indicating that. Yeah. A lot of you who are self-proclaimed bachelorettes or bachelors for life, universe is saying, who are you kidding? Because <laughs> you, you, like, you have marriage coming in for a lot of you. Um, and again, give this time. It might not all make sense right now. But you, this is a very positive reading, but it came from a very dark place, if that makes sense. So you had to go through that darkness or your person did in order to see the light at the end of the tunnel. The light at the end of the tunnel is here or it's going to be here for you, Sag. So, oh, Sag, that was beautiful. That was getting me all up in my field. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know in those comments down below what resonates for you. Uh, if you want to book a personal reading, I would be happy to do that with you. Just shoot me an email. That is all down below. And happy holidays. Whatever you celebrate, I hope you guys are going to celebrate and enjoy the holiday season. All right, enough talking, enough rambling. Bye, guys.